So now we're looking at the very final challenge in the D3 course. And what we're going to do is we're going to finish off the scatter plot that we've been creating by adding some axes so that we can know where these points are if these labels weren't included. So to do this, I'm going to go back to this example that we've been working on over the past few videos. And what we're going to do is we're going to be creating an X axis along the bottom here and a Y axis along the left. So the first thing to do is we need to create an axis object with D3. So I would say let X axis equals and the D3 has a bunch of methods for doing this. So we have axes left like this, but we also have axes bottom, axes top, axes right. And what this left, right, bottom, top specifies is where we want the like text or the markers or labels to go. So if we were to use axis bottom, for example, these labels right here would go beneath the bar. If we were using axes left, they'd go to the left of the bar. So when we're making an x-axis here, we need the labels to be beneath the bar because the axis goes along the bottom here. So we would call axis bottom here. Now the axis method takes in one argument, which is a scale that the axis will adopt. And we've already created a linear scale here for the x-axis. So we can just pass in scale x like this. Now we've created the axis, but we haven't actually drawn it into the SVG area right here. And it's important to remember that the axis the D3 creates is essentially a set of SVG shapes. And if we want to contain a set of SVG shapes and then, you know, perform actions on it or draw them, we can use this group element right here. And it's just represented with G. And what it allows you to do is, is you can put in a set of components or set of shapes inside it and you can apply properties to all those components with the group. So we want to create one of these SVG group elements to put our axes in because that's a set of shapes as well. So we want to render this into the SVG canvas. So I'll use canvas here. Remember that canvas is essentially just the SVG area we created right here. And we want to append this with a group element like this. So I'm just going to put G there. And to add or to create a axis that we created with D3 inside one of these groups, we use a method called call and we can chain this to this method. So I would just say dot call and we can pass in an axis like this here. And now D3 will create this axis, which is a set of shapes and put them inside this group element like so. So now we've got the axis right here, but the problem is it's at like X equals zero at the moment. Sorry, Y equals zero at the moment at the top. And we want it to be along the bottom here. So we need a way to kind of push this down by the correct amount so that it appears at the bottom. And there's an SVG attribute called translate, sorry, transform that allows us to do this. So what this transform does is that it, it can take in like a bunch of these like instructions, I guess. And for example, rotation, translation, skew, scale, and it will just apply those properties to a shape. So the translate is the important one. So what translate does is it moves it along the x-axis by the first number and then moves it along the y-axis by the second number. And that's essentially what we want to do here. So we want to translate this down here by height and we don't want to move it along the y-axis because it's perfectly positioned when we include the padding. So we need to add a transform attribute like this. So to do that, we can call the attribute method with D3 and we want to do transform. And the transformation we want to do is a translate. And the first number is how much we want to move it along the X axis by, and that's going to be zero. 
and then I'm going to put a comma here, but I don't think you need the comma really because they've just used a space here. And But it's okay, it works with the comma. And I'm just going to do that. And the second thing we want is how much to move it along the y-axis. Now we want to move it along the y-axis by height, which is this distance here. Remember that positive y means going down. So we want to move it down by height and then up by padding because we introduced some padding in the last video. So this will be height because we're going positive height, so height downwards, take away padding. And what we also want to do is we want to finish this off with some brackets. So it'll be translate zero height minus padding. And now you can see that it's been moved down here to the correct position. So we brought it down by height and then moved it up by padding. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing and create a y-axis along the left here. So I'm going to create a variable. So y-axis equals d3 dot. And then this time we want the numbers to be on the left of the bar right here. So we want to call axis left. And now we need to give it the argument, which is the scale that we want to use. And in this case, I'll scale y. So now we've created the scale. We just need to add it to our canvas. And to do this, we need another group element. So I'm going to create one right here. And we're going to then call to create the y-axis. And now what that's done is it's done it at x equals 0 at this left corner here. So the markings are kind of off. And we want to basically move it slightly to the right here by the same amount as padding. So it kind of matches up with this. So what we need to do is we need to give it a transform attribute like this. So I'm going to call the, trans, the attribute method and give it transform. And the transformation we want to do is a translation. So we want to translate it. And we want to move it along the x-axis by simply just padding right here, because this distance here is the 30 padding that we specified. So again, watch the previous video if you don't know where that came from. So we want to move it right by padding. And then I'm going to give another string here. And in terms of the y-axis, we're on the correct spot so far because we can see that it'll align well perfectly with this. So we just want to move it along the y by 0 and then close this bracket off. And that is absolutely perfect. So these have now lined up now and we have a functioning x and y axes. So now if I want to do if I wanted to, I can change this number. So if I change it to 3000, you can see that the scale has adapted and also the axes have adapted right here. So in this challenge, if we go down to the bottom, what it wants us to do is it wants it to create a y-axis in the variable named y-axis. So it's this undefined one right here. And so to do that, we will use d3 dot. And then remember that here we used axis left because we want these numbers to be on the left. So that will be d3 dot axis left. Then we pass in as an argument the scale for the y-axis and they've created it right here with the variable name y scale. So I'm just going to give it that. And now I'm going to move this to the left a bit so we can see it better. So now what we need to do is we've created the axis. Now we need to create a kind of a group element. So we one of these to put it inside. And we've got SVG here, which is the canvas itself or selection of the canvas. So we can call the append method on SVG and create a new group element. And then we want to call. So we want to use call and then give it Y axis. So we can create a Y axis inside this. So now we've got the Y axis right here. All we need to do is give it a translation just to push it to the right by the padding amount, which is 60, but we can just use padding. So we want to 
give it an attribute and the attribute is a transform attribute and I'm just going to give the value in here just so we have some room and the value is translate open bracket and then we want padding oops and then comma and then in terms of the y-axis we're okay because this is just going to align perfectly with this so we can just do zero and now that's moved it to the correct position right here and we have a perfect axis so I'm just going to go ahead and submit that now fingers crossed and yeah that's worked perfectly so that's the end of this d3 visualization series